Good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Amen. You can see the title of our message this evening. What does it all mean? What does it all mean? I don't know if this was announced. I do want to say one thing before we begin. When we're done, we're going to have a, um, since it's a week of prayer, we're going to have a season, some uh, time afterwards for, uh, for you to be able to pray. And I'm going to ask that when you're done, when you're praying, uh, once we're done, we'll all pray. Uh, you can pray on your own. God may speak to your heart. He give you an opportunity to speak to God. And once you're done praying, if you, would, if you could silently, uh, quietly leave the auditorium. And that would give respect to others who may be, um, may be praying still. So if you could do that, uh, I'd really appreciate that. And I know the Lord will really appreciate that. So I just want to, if, if we can do that at the end of, of service, um, again, just want to kind of share that. All right. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll, we'll get into our talk tonight. I'm going to bow my head. Bow, I'll, you can just bow your head. I'll kneel. That's all right. Let's pray. Our loving Father in heaven, Lord, I want to thank you for your kindness. I want to thank you, Father, that in this year of 2020, you have given us an opportunity to hear a word from you, that you've extended our, the probationary time that we can make our walk and our call and exception sure. Um, Lord, we want to pray tonight that you would be with my mind, that you would be with my lips, that you would put your words in my mouth, and that what you share through me would, would be a blessing to my brothers and sisters. I want to ask that you would give us ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Lord, we thank you for hearing us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Again, what does it all mean? You can see the picture there. You notice there's a lady there, and she, what is she doing? She's working with a, a coronavirus patient. So you probably know where this is going. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21 and verse 28, it says, And when these things begin, and when these things uh, begin, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. You know, Jesus had for, for long ago given us this idea that, look, when you see signs taking place, it says, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. And I believe, I don't know about you, but I believe that we are living in a time where Jesus is soon to come. I believe we're looking at a time that, that um, we cannot ignore what's happening around our world. And so Jesus says, look, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. In the testimonies, Ellen White actually says this. She says, the scriptures describe the condition of the world just before Christ's second coming. She says, but who heeds the warnings given by the fast fulfilling signs of the times? What impression is made upon worldlings what change is seen in their attitude? And notice what she says. She says, no more than was seen in the attitude of the inhabitants of the noatic world. She continues, actually. She says, absorbed in worldly business and pleasures, the antediluvians knew not until the flood came and took them all away. They had heaven sent warnings, but they refused to listen. And today, and, the, and today, the world, utterly regardless of the warning voice of God, is hurrying on to eternal ruin. What is the point of a warning if you don't heed it? I remember when I was uh, canvassing uh, some years ago, I was, we were in Memphis, Tennessee. I was actually in a, in a Washita Hills canvassing uh, 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 group program at that time. And it was a school year, and we were canvassing in Memphis, Tennessee, my hometown. And I remember being in the church, the church where we were staying, we were in a, a gym, and the gym had carpet in it, but it was like a gym fellowship hall. And those of you who have canvassed, how many of you have ever canvassed a, and had to sleep in a gym? You know what that's like, huh? If you haven't had that experience, you should have that experience. Oh, man, it was great. You know, in a gym, you can hear every noise. Yeah, some of you know what I'm talking about. You can hear the noise. And the thing is, is that, um, there are some individuals who need help getting up in the morning. So like anyone who needs help, what do they do? They set, a, they set an alarm. So in this specific canvassing program, I had a good friend of mine. I'm not going to give his name. I'm not gonna, I love that brother. I'm not going to put him out like that. But he set his alarm, and every morning that alarm went off. And he didn't wake up. <laughs> every morning that, that alarm just kept going off, 
and he would never wake up. <clears throat> Finally, I had another friend of mine, and he stayed across the other side of the gym, and I can remember this. One morning, he, I guess he was just like, you know, I can't take it anymore. He gets up, he walks over to where that friend was, and he turns off his alarm, and you know what happened? My friend looked at him and said, thank you. <laughs> he heard it the whole time. He heard it the whole time, but he was too comfortable in his sleeping bag to wake up. The alarm is going off, but you're too comfortable in your sleeping bag to wake up, but you hear it. <clears throat> we still loved him. We still loved him. What is the point of alarm if you don't wake up? And here's the thing. As Christians, we see the alarms. Oh, boy, we can get together. We can talk about all the signs of the times. Don't you see it fulfilling? All the signs. Did you see what happened over here? We see the alarms, but we're comfortable in our sleeping bags, aren't we? Notice what the Bible says, LOI continues, so we'll continue on. But notice this, 2019, we're going to talk about some things that's been happening. And by the way, I was not going to give this talk. I was like, Lord, there's so many other things I want to talk about. Like, like do you know there's so much you can talk about if you just talk about the love of Jesus alone? If you just take the Gospels alone, there's so many things you can talk about, and I'm learning it. And I was just like, man, I just want to talk about that. But I could not ignore what's happening in our world right now, and I know that you can't ignore it. So the question is like, what's really going on? 2019, everyone remember 2019? How many of you wish you could go back? All right, there's a few hands. This is what happened in 2019. I want to give you just a, this is, look, this is not even, this doesn't touch the surface. But how many of you remember uh, the hurricane, hurricane Dorian? Okay, a few of you remember that. It was the most intense, this is what I was told uh, looking on the news. It was the most intense cyclone ever in, that hit, to hit the Bahamas. Wow, it was pretty strong. Uh, how many of you remember hearing about the, the North Korean and U.S. nuclear talks? They were stalled. Yeah, some of us remember that. I remember thinking, like, wow, what is, what is happening? This is, I mean, talking about them, about nuclear talks, and now those nuclear talks were, were stalled. Um, the Central American migrant exodus and how it was growing, I think they were trying to press. How many of you remember that? Some of you remember that. All right. This is what was happening in 2019. And boy, we hit 2020, and some of these things, I, I'll be honest, I forgot about it. I'd actually go and look it up. Uh, the U.S. and China trade war, it was continued. Some of us remember that, right? That was what was happening in 2019. And then we had the Amazons burn. And I think something happened to my slide there. Part of it got deleted. I couldn't fix it. Um, but they was like, this was, this was huge, especially as you were into like climate change and, and, and global warming. It's like, wow, this is huge. This is really huge. And, and how that came about, I'm not going to go into all the details about that. But that's what happened in 2019. It actually continues. Protesters take the streets. There were protests all over the world. Anyone remember that? In fact, there were so many protests, they said that 2019 was the year of protests. They said that before they came into uh, year 2020. They didn't know. They didn't know. El, and then, uh, of course, El Paso shooting. And I'll put this on here because in 2019, we were still having mass shootings. We remember that. And, you know, I think the only reason I believe, the only reason why we haven't heard more of it is because, or, or I don't know if I've heard any mass shootings this year, is because we've been on lockdown. Um, but we, there were mass shootings that were taking place. People were horrified. You remember, there were even before that schools where people were, young children being shot in mass shootings. And people was like, how, when will it stop? That was 2019. And then we had um, uh, the government shutdown. I didn't know this. Now, I'm guessing Mr. Neal probably followed some of this. I don't know. Um, is you still the history teacher here? Mr. Neal may know some of this. But I didn't realize they said it was the longest shutdown in U.S. history. Is that true? Wow, the longest shutdown in U.S. history. Wow, what, what was happening in 2019? We had terrorist attacks in 2019. And so you can imagine when 2020 came, people were happy. Whew, 2019 is over. 2020, 2020 vision. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah, 2020, we're excited. And uh, so people were excited. I remember I was at GYC. And uh, I used to see people coming out with these, I mean, their outfits. I was like, wow, they're going, are they, are they in a play? Uh, they just, all these outfits, people were celebrating the New Year's. They were so excited. It was 20, 2019 was over, and here comes 2020. But lo and behold, they did not realize what was coming. The Bible says something in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 8. It says, all these are the beginning of birth pains. You have the King James says, beginning of sorrows. 
The Bible says these are the beginning of birth pains. Now, why birth pains? We know that when, well, some of us are more familiar with this than others, I'm sure. But birth pains, birth pains, when someone has birth pains, what do we know about birth pains? They get closer and closer, and what happens to the intensity of it? It's stronger and stronger. Jesus says, when you see these things, he says it's like birth pains. Now, this is so important because so many people in the world will say, listen, there's always been all those prophecies that have been taking place. Those things have been happening for years. But Jesus said, listen, wait a minute. You're missing one thing. It's birth pains. So if it's birth pains, then what would we expect? Would 2020 be better than 2019? It's birth pains. What's really happening? One article said this in CNN. 2020 has changed everything, and it's only half over. This was only six months into 2020. They said it's only half over, and it's changed everything. So what has 2020 been like? Now, we know there's a number of things that happened in 2020. I remember when I was at, still at GYC, they had um, um, the Iranian, Iranian um, general, I think, one of their top generals. He was, the drone was sent in, I believe. I don't know all the story, but they actually, he was killed. And so the Iranians was like, look, we're coming at America. Rumors of wars, right? And so I was like, wow, this, is, this year hasn't even started off. This is like day three of 2020, and this is already happening. And then we already heard rumors of, of this little thing that started in Wuhan, China. And, you know, I'm not going to get into all the details about that. But we knew, like, wow, what is this that's coming, right? And then suddenly we saw in March 11th of 2020, we saw that uh, the World Health Organization declares coronavirus an outbreak or coronavirus outbreak a pandemic. This was global. I was like, wait, this is getting out of hand. Something's happening. 2020. And what happened in 2020 as a result? Shut down. How many of you had to go home from school? How many of you had a stay, stayed home from church? Went, yeah, like, wow. Shut down. Huge cities were shut down. They said there was so many, um, like the shutdown, it was so big that animals started coming out. Animals that were not tra- walking in the city started coming out. Like, where are the people? We're safe. <laughs> wow. They started coming, coming out. They said the environment started getting better. Huge cities were shutting down. Like, we've never seen anything like this. That was 2020. But it got worse. Because of the shutdown, what started to happen? Now people were like, whoa, what's going to happen to the economy? People started losing jobs. That was 2020. In fact, we're told the next global depression is coming. And optimism, doesn't matter how optimistic you seem, you, you think you are, it just won't slow it down. It won't slow it down. By the way, men's hearts start to fail them for fear. Men's start, hearts start to fail them for fear because they were like, what's going to happen to our health? What's going to happen to our pocketbook? What's going to happen to, to, to our security? All the things that men think are safe in the world, they started fearing. Men's hearts start to fail them for fear. What was happening? What do we, what do we make of all this? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 3, we're continuing what was, talk, what was happening in 2020. The Bible says, for when they shall say peace and safety. Isn't that what people want? Peace and safety. It says, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So people are like, listen, we need to find some security. We need to find some plan for this. Like, like this is not, whoa, what's happening here? We need to get a stimulus. We need to get, wow, we need some security here. But in return, what do we have? You remember the year of protests? Yeah, that was before 2020. People start protesting. Here's a picture of an individual. They were saying, listen, you, you know, we're protesting the idea. You can't shut me in my home. And if you notice, so the pro, one protester has like a little sign in their hand. Uh, the other protester, they're protesting like you need to stay home because I'm a nurse and, and I've seen people dying. You need to stay home. So there were protests, protesting protests. Does that make sense? That's what we were seeing. And then some of you know um, that there was the protests of, of the issues of, of Black Lives Matter and, and George Floyd was, was murdered. 
And so here they said there's peaceful protests, violent clashes erupt this weekend. And then they said, here's what happened in six cities. So you start seeing more protests, protests of oppression that were taking place. We saw protests start to get out of hand, didn't we? How many of you are familiar with CHOP? Just a little bit. State of, I guess they call it the state of CHOP or something. Um, I could be wrong on that. I'm, I'm not here to, I'm not good at this whole news reporting thing, but this is what was happening. This is what happened in 2020. This is something that happened just recently. If you notice here, August, August 30. It says one person is dead after a shooting during protests in downtown Portland. What was happening was they had this, this one group of um, protesters were there protesting uh, Black Lives Matter, and they had another group protesting, you know, the make, I guess, Make America Great, and they clashed. And so they were protesting. Now, I don't know if you noticed this picture here. Do you, anyone know that, that billboard there? Yeah. Isn't that interesting? I thought it was very interesting. It says, it actually says, um, worried? Jesus office security. That's kind of true. That's kind of true. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. And it's almost like Jesus is still offering messages of hope. I didn't even see that when I first put it in. I looked, I was like, wow. Jesus offers security. Jesus says this, by the way, John 14, 27. You guys have a scripture song about this. One of my favorites I used to enjoy. It says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be what, everyone? Let it not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus, how can you say that when all these things are going on? Like, we can't do anything about it. How can you say that? It's because I've already done it. You know, I had trouble all around me. I had people that were trying to kill me, and I went through it. I had peace, and I want to give that to you. Even in the midst of all the trials that you're going through, even in the midst of the insecurities, Jesus says, listen, abide in me. I'll give you the peace that passes all understanding. This is what was happening. Luke chapter 21 says this, and there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon earth distress of nations with perplexities. And notice what it says, the seas and the waves roaring. Have we seen, been seeing things of that nature happening? Not too long ago, uh, there was Hurricane Laura. Anyone followed Hurricane Laura at all? Anyone? A few people kind of sort of followed that. I didn't follow it as much, but this is what I was told. It says Louisiana, um, strikes, Hurricane Laura strikes Louisiana, killing six and leaving a path of destruction. And then I'm told that um, Hurricane Laura struck Louisiana as one of the most powerful storms in U.S. history. You remember when we talked about labor pains? What, what was one of the, the um, characteristics of labor pains? They become more intense. They become more intense. So it says that it was one of the most powerful storms in U.S. history. And of course, it says, leaving a widespread of destruction across the states. Here's another statement that Ellen White talks about. This is another prophecy she deals with. She says, in the last day, in the last scenes of, of this earth's history, war will rage. We've been seeing that. There will be pestilence, plague, and famine. The waters of the deep will overflow their boundaries. Property and life will be destroyed by what? And what? Flood. And flood. We should be preparing for the mansions that Christ has gone to prepare for them that love him. Listen, this world is not our home. I love that song, this world is not our home, I'm just what? I'm just passing through, this world is not our home. Listen, we try to hoard up and we try to get all these different things and all the accolades and all these houses and God, it's like this is not your home. We should be preparing our hearts for the mansions in heaven. But notice the key here. I want to, I want to look at this before we leave this, this paragraph. She says, uh, should be prepared for the mansions Christ has gone to prepare for them that love him. That's the key. Notice that. Does anyone remember the locust? 2020 locust. This is, this is an article. This is not me like writing this in. This is an article. They said, the locust, they said, the biblical locust plagues of 2020. People are starting looking at this like, whoa. This is biblical. What is this? It says in 2020, locusts have swarmed in large numbers in dozens of countries. They named some of the countries. And they said when swarms affect several countries at once in very large numbers, it is known as a plague. Did God say the plagues will happen in the last days? What is happening? I believe Jesus is coming soon. I believe Jesus is coming soon. 
This one really caught my attention. It says, is COVID-19 bringing the Bible's 10 greatest plagues? If you read this article, I didn't put it on here, but they actually give a list of the 10 plagues in Egypt, and they show how, in their estimation, eight of them has been fulfilling in this past year with the whole COVID. Eight of them. Wow. People are starting to turn their minds and attention to spiritual things, aren't they? <clears throat> Someone say, amen, amen. This is opportunity, by the way, canvassers. Opportunity. Someone was telling me that uh, not too long ago, how the Lord was blessing. Jesus says, For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be what, everyone? Famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. How about this one? Another biblical reference says, Biblical famines could double global hunger as a result of the coronavirus, UN warns. And they continue to read. I want you to uh, notice the, the red words there. It says, The UN's world... A food program predicted that the number of people facing acute food insecurity stood to rise to 265 million by the end of this year, up from 135 million from 2019. It's almost double. And they're saying part of the reason this is because they said we're not even getting the donations. Countries that normally would be able to give the donations, they're hurting themselves. We're not getting it. Jesus said the famines were come. Jesus was giving the forewarning. Notice this one. It says, sea levels rise accelerating along U.S. coastlines, scientists warn. People are looking at this whole global warming. They say, wow, look at how those, the sea levels are rising now. There was a, I think this is the quote I want to, to share. I'm missing one, actually. Um, notice what she says here in, in Review and Herald. She says, the daily record of disasters show that there is no safety anywhere. Even in our homes, we are in danger. For the storms, floods, and fires are sweeping off thousands while earthquakes are destroying additional thousands. If there ever was a time when we should be sober, watch and pray, it is now. It is now. She says our only safety, our, only, our, our lives are safe only when hid, in, hid, hid with Christ in God. How many of you remember this? We're talking about your home. This was in Michigan. This was like not long after uh, March, I believe. I don't think I have the date, the time there. But there were two levees in, uh, or two dams in Michigan that broke, and the water they they had a t ran a test on it. And one of the, the dams was counted as fair. The other one was like this one's bad, and those dams both of them broke, and the water ran over into a town of about forty two, I believe forty two thousand people. There were about 10,000 people's homes uh, or right around the dam. 10,000 people lived right around the dam. And the, feet, and the water got up to, I, I believe, it was nine feet. This was a pandemic, or, or this was a, a crisis in the midst of the pandemic happening. Things are just happening right up on top of a, another. And then you know the winds in Iowa. I did not even hear about this until our, our, the students from, from OA went to um, they just got back from helping them with this disaster. Uh, but crops, millions of acres, destroyed from a wind. The youth should seek God more earnestly. The tempest is coming, and we must get ready for, the, for its fury by having repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And then she says this, fires will break out unexpectedly, unexpectedly, and no human effort will be able to quench them. The palaces of earth will be swept away in the fury of the flames. Have we been seeing fires? I didn't put any specific article here, but this is, this is one that I, I kind of found. It says, there are dozens of fire, large fires, wildfires burning across the U.S. right now. This was, this was at the time, it was saying right now. It says, here, here, Here's where, they, here's where they are. And I just put the, the states where you were finding these fi fires. Could you imagine all those states at the same time? All those states, wildfires. Only two states had, had the fires down to a point where they could control it. The rest of them, they were still trying to get it under control. All those states at one time. What's really happening? What's really happening? We've been looking at a, at a, a lot of these little current events it's just been happening in 2020, and guess what? The year isn't over yet. What does it mean? What does it really mean? We know that this means that Jesus is coming. 
We know that. We sense that. We look at the, at the Bible process and wow, I just really get this sense. Jesus is really coming soon. The labor pains are closer. The labor pains are more intense. But what does this really mean? Like, why are these things happening? Here's a quote from Maranatha, 175. She says, This restraining spirit of God is even now being withdrawn from the world. Hurricanes, storms, tempests, disasters by sea by and by land follow one another in quick succession. The signs thickening around us telling of the near approach of the Son of God are attributed to any other than the true cause. Ellen White tells us that the reason these things are happening is because the Spirit of God is being withdrawn from the earth. But she also says that there will be those who will look at that and say, wow, the Spirit of God, yes, yes, these are because of sin. This is because, you know, God is, we have, we have, we have, we have turned away from God. We need to repent. And she says, Satan would play it on the minds of men that they will, that, that um, they were attributed, says, um, the signs sticking around us telling us that the near approaches of the Son of God are attributed to any other than the true cause. Than the true cause. What's happening in the religious world? It's happening in the religious world. You know, it's easy for us to get caught up in, in, in politics. It's easy for us to get caught up in all these other events. But we're told that underneath all of this, Satan is working for a movement. He's working for a, a national Sunday law. And by the way, as Seventh-day Adventists, we shouldn't be afraid to say that. Do you know in Great Controversy, we're actually told, we said, well, like, do, should we wait for these events to happen before we talk about them? Where is your faith in the Word of God? Where's our faith? This is what Satan is really moving towards. And so what we see now is that there are, are religious heads and people saying, listen, let's really let's start to come together. Let's really come together. And we understand that Satan is really bringing this together for a final cause, for a final move. He wants to pass a son law. He wants to set up an image of the beast. Pope joins into religious prayer, begging God to end the pandemic. By the way, I didn't mention this, but... Right now, I think it's in this month, uh, religious leaders are planning what they call the return. Let's all come together. Let's pray for repentance of, of the United States, right? Here's the head of the, I think they're called the World Council of Churches. And he says, Pope comes to affirm 70 years of ecumenical growth. The Pope came to visit them. All these churches, this World Council of Churches coming together. And the Pope is coming to, to confirm them. They're coming together. They're praying together. They're getting together. There's a, little, there's a little more information about this. It says, look at the red word. It says, it is, it is an important sign for churches and members of the WCC, World Council of Churches, across the globe and another, and another step forward to the journey towards full Christian unity. Full Christian unity. That's what's happening in our religious world. We see that things are happening in the world uh, at large, but we also see in the religious world Signs of the times are really being fulfilled. It's telling us that Jesus is coming soon. Someone shared this one with me. A good friend of mine, uh, David Machado, he shared this. He said, have you looked at this? And I was like, well, I haven't. So I looked it up. Some of you probably know David, right? I know some of you. Um, how many of you have seen this? Very fascinating. Um, obviously, there's rabbis who are looking for the coming of the Messiah. And there's some of them saying, look, don't leave Jerusalem because they believe he's coming very soon. And from my understanding, there's at least one rabbi that has been supposedly meeting with the Messiah already. That's a sign of prophecy. Do you, we, we realize that Satan is even planning to come on the scene as Christ. We are seeing, whether it's in the natural world, political world, the religious world, signs of the times are being fulfilled. And what does it mean? It means that Jesus is coming soon. What does it mean? It means that the Spirit of God is being withdrawn. We know what this means. We are familiar with the alarms. We're Seventh-day Adventists. Some of us have heard this all our lives, haven't we? I want to share some good news with you. What's the ultimate sign that Jesus is coming? We all know this, right? It says, in this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, I want to be honest with you. I have a little, a little theory in my mind. Why is it that this is the last 
thing that has to happen. This gospel has to be preached into all the world. This is my theory. Number one, everyone has to make a choice. Everyone has to make a choice. The second thing is, the reason that we have all of the things we have in this world today, the calamities, the, the crimes, the, the, all of the, the apostasy, all the things we have in the world today, my theory is that the reason why that's happening is because the world is rejecting the gospel. And when they reject the gospel, they're rejecting their one solution to life's problems. Otherwise, says this, Ministry of Healing. The gospel is a wonderful simplifier of what, everyone? When you reject the gospel, you reject the solution to life's problems. She even continues to say this. She says, there are not many, even among educators and statesmen, who comprehend the causes that underlie the present state of society. Those who hold the reins of government are not able to solve the problem of moral corruption, poverty, and pauperism, and increasing crime. They are struggling in vain to place business operation on a more secure basis. This is something our country is struggling with even now. How are we going to put things on a more secure basis? She says, if men would give more heed to what, everyone? They would find a solution to the problems that perplex them. The gospel. But people reject it. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn. And we know as seven Adventists that this means, I believe, Jesus is coming soon. So what do we do? We say, well, I need to get ready. How many believe that? How many agree with that? I agree with that. I need to get ready. And we do need to get ready. But I, want to, I have a little thought I want to share with you tonight. All that I just share with you is not even my main topic tonight. I'm not going to preach another sermon, but that's not my main point. Can I share a story with you? Some years ago, I was, too, I was in high school. Can you believe I was in high school? I was in high school once. And I can remember it was my junior year. The year was 2001. It was my first semester. The month was September. Does anyone know where I'm going? 9-11. I remember that. I remember I was sitting in American history class. Some student comes running to our class, and it's like, listen, you got to come right now. Come to the lobby. Everyone's surrounding the television. I didn't know what was going on. My teacher hopped up, and I was like, wow, she's letting us out of class. Here we go. I hop up out of class. We run to the lobby. Everyone's there. Teachers are there. Students are there. And uh, I remember we were all sitting around the television. I'm looking at this thing, and I think the first uh, tower was already hit. And people were looking at it, and, and I remember one student walked by, and it was so dramatic. She walks by, and she's like, Wow, what movie is that? And I can remember one of the teachers turned and said, that's not a movie. It's not a movie. I remember looking at this, and, and suddenly they start to show somewhere. I can't remember all the, the sequence of how it all happened, but they start to show that the Pentagon was hit. And then they show there was another plane that, that was, I guess, I can't remember if it was aiming for the White House, but it ended up in the field. I can't remember. I, I could be correct on that. And after though that, it seemed like within minutes, maybe it was within hours, everything seemed to start shutting down. The games that I love, I remember I love basketball. I love the sports. The games that I love started to shut Well, all games are canceling. Flights started to cancel. It seems like even like malls and things of that nature start to cancel. My father worked at the state building in Tennessee, and he says, I've never seen people walk around with weapons like that. They had the military down there. And I remember my whole world changed. I remember thinking to myself, wow, like Jesus is coming. It woke me up, literally. I used to sleep in Bible class. <laughs> I'm serious. I was awake. I was awake. I don't remember much in Bible class, but I remember my teacher coming and pulling out the little book, Testimony Volume 9. I think a lot of Bible teachers did that then. And it started at page 11. He started to read about current events. He started to read about how they try to, to put out, the, the Indians try to put out the, the, the fires in the buildings, and they could not. And I remember just being awake. I was like, Jesus is coming. They canceled school that specific day. And I remember go, walking home. My home was uh, not too far away. And I, I walked home. 
And when I walked home, I, I just, I got on my knees and I prayed and I was like, Jesus is coming. And here's the thing, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, but I made a commitment in my heart. I was like, you know what? From this day forward, I'm going to be ready. I'm not going to watch those things I used to watch. I'm not going to say those things I used to say. That language I, I, was, I, was, I would say when I was around my friends but not in, in front of my mom, I'm not going to say that anymore. I'm serious about God. Jesus is coming. And I remember going back to, my, to, to school. Boy, we were having like prayer services every day, and we were serious. It was like, man. I'm serious. This is it. I remember one week went by. Did pretty good. Another week went by. Another week went by. And before long, I was back to where I was before. I couldn't sustain it. I was so excited. Like Jesus was coming, but here was the problem. I wasn't interested in devotion still. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to read now, I'm going to read now. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand what that meant. You know? I, I would try to stay up in church. I would stay up, I would stay up. Oh, man. I wasn't really, really in love with Jesus. But I woke up for a moment. But I didn't have, something was missing to where I didn't have the motivation to go further. I remember years went by, and I looked back on that time, I was like, well, what was really happening? And I came across a quote. Ellen White has a quote, it's in Signs of the Times, and she says this, the shortness of time is frequently urged as an incentive for seeking righteousness and making Christ our friend. She says, this should not be the great motive with us. Notice she didn't say it should not be the motive with us. What did she say? It should not be the great motive. So when we sit here and we say, listen, Jesus is coming soon. We need to really wake up. Uh, that should be a little motive. That should really wake you up. But let me tell you something. How many of you walk around with your alarm going off to keep you up? How many of you do that? You got your alarm going off, you're in class, you're dun, 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 dun. you just got to go in class, you're sitting there in your alarms, dun, dun, dun. teacher's like, will you please turn it off? No, this is the only way I can stay up in class. <laughs> How many of you do that? The alarm is not to keep you up. You should have the motivation to say, look, I got things to do, there's duties I need to take care of, I need to, there's something else that keeps you up. The alarm is only to wake you up. The signs of the times is not to keep you up. It's only to help wake you up. It's an alarm. It's a warning. Ellen White continues. She says, as an incentive for seeking righteousness, making Jesus Christ our friend. She says, this should not be the great motive with us, for it savors of selfishness. Savors of what? Selfish. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that your desire to go to Jesus can be, or go to heaven can be selfish? Your desire to, to have a relationship with Jesus can be selfish? She says it savors of selfishness. It is, necessary that the t it, it, is it necessary that the terrors of the day of God should be held before us that we may be compelled to, to right action through fear? It ought not to be. Now, I love this. She says, Jesus is what, everyone? Attractive. Jesus is attractive. She says, he is full of love, mercy, and compassion. He proposes to be our friend, to walk with us through all the rough paths, pathways of life. Jesus is attractive. And let me tell you something, I'm going to be quite honest with you. There was a, lot, a long time in my life that I didn't really see how Jesus was attractive. I see people get up and say, oh, praise the Lord. And I was thinking to myself, oh, I really want that, but I don't know how, how they could say that. I just don't see the Bible attractive. I'll be honest, that was my experience, no matter how hard I tried. But I had to come to the point where I say, listen, if God, if you're really attractive, show me in your word. I don't want to just be moved by, by the events that's happening in the world. I want to be moved because I love Christ. Amen. And let me tell you something. Jesus is so attractive. Amen. He's my best friend. He's my best friend. My point is tonight is not to tell you just about all the events. If you looked at the events and tonight your heart was awakened and praise God. But I tell you, unless you have a relationship with Jesus, you won't stay awake. You'll be waiting for the next event. It's like, dun, dun, dun. it won't work. 
our motive tonight needs to be to know Jesus. And I believe at a place like this, there's many of us, we can look like we know Jesus because everyone else looks like they know Jesus. But do you really know him? We could go to our classes, we can talk at our lunch tables about events that are happening and our devotions and all these various things, but do you really know him? We can be motivated because we see the current events, or we could be motivated because we're like, you know what, I want God to bless me with this many books. I'm going to pray. I need Jesus. I need you to be my friend today. But do you really know him? Do you know Jesus? The Bible says, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. My friends, our prayer tonight, we'll be praying. Lord, give me a heart to know you. These things in the world, they should wake us up. I'm not denying that. There's other places where Ellen White says, get ready, get ready, get ready. You know, you have the other extreme where people's like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about the current events. No, 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 no. That's the other extreme. These things should wake us up. But the only thing that's going to keep us in Christ is an ever-growing relationship with Jesus. And some of us know that we've never had that. Some of us know that we need to renew that. My challenge for you tonight, we need to be praying tonight, Lord, help us to know Jesus this week. I don't know how to know Jesus. Help us to know Jesus. Do you think you can pray that with me tonight, this week? I also want to ask tonight, you know, there's someone here tonight, every time I do this, this talk, I talk to young people, or not this talk specifically, but I talk about prophecy. I love talking about prophecy. But I always meet people who are like, you know what? They're afraid of what's going on. They're like, wow, you know, this kind of gives me a little concern, and, and maybe that should shake them up a little bit. But they're like, you know what? I really, I want to have that relationship with Jesus. I just don't quite know how. And maybe there's someone here tonight who's saying, you know what? I really want to really want to have a relationship with, with Jesus. This is one reason why I decided to go to Washington Hills, because I really want something different in my life. But I still don't know quite how to do that. Jesus is calling your heart. And what I want to share with you tonight is that if that's you, if that's you and you're saying, I want to have a walk with Jesus, Lord, teach me how. I want to make a commitment to walk with Jesus. But I need some direction. I need to know how. I want to know how. Specifically, if that's you, you want to make a commitment to saying, I want to know how. Maybe that means you're going to commit your heart to Jesus and say, I want to go all the way. I want to commit to him in baptism. I want to have a good conscience towards God. And I'm saying, look, I want to really be committed to knowing Jesus, not what everyone else is telling me about Jesus. I want to know him. If that's you, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand tonight. There's some specific individuals. I want to know Jesus. All right. I want to do something tonight. Because I see there's a few hands up, and, and, and the reason why I want to take your hands is because I know there's specific things. I want to share with you some things that's helped me. And those are things I may not share with the whole group, but I want to specifically share it with you. And I want to talk to you about where are you in that process saying, Lord, what, is, what kind of commitment I really want to make to God? So this is what we're going to do tonight. If you raised your hand, and I didn't ask any of the teachers, I don't, I don't know if I'm able to do this or not, but I'm just going to go out on a limb and do it, and they'll tell me if I can't, right? But I'm going to ask if you could meet with me. I want to meet on this side. I want to pray with you specifically, and I want to talk to you afterwards. If you raise your hand tonight, if you could meet, is it okay if I can meet on the left? If you could meet with me on the left, and maybe we could do it during, while everyone else is praying, if you just quietly make your way over to the side, I want to pray with you specifically and then right after us, I want to talk to you specifically. Is that okay? All right. Let's go ahead and go into our prayer time. And if you just want to pray silently, and once you're done praying, um, I'll, we'll just go ahead and, and um, you can quietly walk out. And for those individuals, if you want to quietly make your way to my left, I'll be on this side. We are so pleased you could join us for the special event here at Watch the Hills Academy and College. If you've enjoyed this presentation as much as I have, like, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to help support the making of these programs, you can find donation information in the description below. 
Thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you.